Shalom, I am Dr. Ann Davis, and in our work on the spiritual significance of numbers in the Hebrew Scriptures, actually in all of the Bible, we're ready now for the number seven. You remember that God created everything in six days, and he rested on the seventh day. However, we can see there's more work to be, got, be done. God's not done with work. I mean, he created everything, but out of the creation, we are now able to, to do what God wants us to do. It's not perfect because certainly in God's people we are not yet ready to come into his righteous presence. So what does it mean that God's creation was complete? And what can the number seven teach us about what God is asking us to do now? Well, we go to the creation account and we read, By the seventh day, that's Yom Hashvi'i, day seven, God completed his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. So we've got parallel completed rested. We've got parallel done and is repeated done. Kala it is, has been translated completed and it means to bring to a very end. So in the beginning God brought to a very end everything that was needed. Asa is simply to do something. Rest is Shabbat, which not only means to rest but it means to stop. And then of course we have Asa again. So in the beginning, God created everything. And now he puts us into this created world. Now it's our job. Of course, he's given us his, his word. He's given us his son. He's given us the gift of his Holy Spirit to help us. But he's placed us in the world. Now let's take a look at the number seven. When Joshua and the people of Israel cross the Jordan River to enter into the promised land, seven priests shall carry seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark. So this is symbolic representing that um, God is going to conquer this promised land and he's, his people are going to take it from the enemy who are the Canaanites. Then on the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times and the priests shall blow the trumpets. Well the number seven is a pretty important number here. It's repeated four times. So this is saying that the destruction of God's enemy is prophetically complete. Now at Jericho it was complete, but it's also prophetically complete. Something has not, it hasn't happened yet, but God can say it's complete because he knows it's going to be complete. What's it called? Prophetic future, I think is what it's called. So you can say it's done, even though it isn't done yet, because you know it's going to be done because God says so. And what does the number seven teach us? In Leviticus, if you do not obey me, all right, think about the times that maybe you've done something that is worldly not in the way of God. Then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Now that's not to be cruel, and it's, it, it's, it's a form of instruction. If you get hit between the eyeballs seven times, you're going to realize, wait a minute, I'm doing something wrong. I've got to start doing it right in God's way. And then a proverb, a righteous man falls seven times and rises again but the wicked stumble in time of calamity. So that just sh it shows us that, that we're trying to do the things God's way and it's not going to happen overnight. It's a maturing process. And in one of the Psalms, seven times a day, I praise you because of your righteous ordinances. And this is David talking to, to God. I'm praising you because you have told us the way to walk in your ways, your righteous ordinances. Now, this is really interesting. There are six things which the Lord hates. Yes, seven which are an abomination to him. So the number seven, uh, the six are going to lead up to what is important, which is the number seven. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed blood, so see, speak, what you do, a heart that devises the wicked plans, what's your thinking, feet that run rapidly to evil, what you're doing, a false witness, a person who utters lies. Now we get to the number seven. One who spreads strife among brothers. I see that happening today. The Christian community is very split, very divided, and we're judging um, those that aren't thinking the way that we think, and that is the number, powerful number seven, which is complete. Uh, one who spreads strife among brothers. Be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. 
if he sins against you seven times a day and returns to you seven times saying, I repent, forgive him. So you don't automatically forgive. The, the person has to repent. Repent means a commitment to change. And then we have another one. Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven, which is a lot. <laughs> you don't forgive a person automatically. They, ha you, they have to be drawn to repent, to, to, to seek, because otherwise you're forgiving them and they're just going to keep doing it over and over and over again. So the forgiveness comes, I mean, you give them love the whole time they're sinning, you know, and you, you bestow love on them, but not forgiveness. You don't forgive them until they're ready to really try to, to change. So what have we learned? The number seven represents what is complete and finished. God's creation, which was complete on the seventh day, nevertheless made provisions for his people to become complete in righteousness. God punishes us for our sins, but, but it's a method of, of instruction. And he praises us when we walk in his ways. That's called blessings. More than anything else, God hates it when we spread strife among our Christian brethren by judging them instead of bestowing love on them. They may think differently from you. That's okay. They may be thinking differently that's not correct. That's okay. Bestow love on them. You walk in the way that's correct and eventually they're going to see it. If a person repents of sin, we must forgive that person. And with that, I wish you shalom.